So I want to go through an ESPN article that had some changes to the New Orleans Saints starting lineup for this 2024 season. And I don't necessarily agree with a lot, some of it. I don't disagree with some of it. But we're going to go through step-by-step -step offense and defense and project all of the starters for the New Orleans Saints offense and what ESPN had to say about it. So here is a quick update in our June sub battle. It's been, you know, numbers are kind of down this month, but here's the deal. We need your help. Guys, we are almost done with the month of June, and it is not too late to win this battle. We can even extend it a day or two into July if we absolutely must. If it's a tie, I will talk to our Falcons host, Matthew Peterson, and we will make it happen. But don't let me down. We can't lose to the Falcons in June. Help me out. We need about 30 subscribers to take down Atlanta. So for ESPN, here is who they had as the Saints starters. No mysteries there. Quarterback Derek Carr, Alvin Kamara as the running back one, and Jamal Williams as the running back two. Now, my first takeaway for this is I do believe that the rushing attack for the Saints is going to be much more improved this season as opposed to what it was last year. I do think that all three backs in Kamara, uh, Jamal Williams, and Kendra Miller can have a positive impact on the offense, and I think that they can offer somewhat different skill sets and somewhat and be, and be good fits for different situations. And I do understand that there's a lot of things to figure out with the Alvin Kamara contract situation, but I don't think it's going to be much of a problem. And I do think it's cool that Clint Kubiak has been emphasizing the rushing attack for the Saints. Here's what he said on his offensive philosophy a little bit ago. We just want to be grounded and run the football. We, have a, we want to have an identity of we can run the football against eight-man fronts. That's something we're going to stress to the guys early this offseason. Building our play actions, moving the pocket off of that, being a real good team on first and second down. We're dialed in on that in phase one and in phase two. And I do think that you should be excited for the new, the new Saints offense. I mean, this is the first time that the New Orleans Saints are going to have a different looking office since the Bush administration. That's a long time, everybody. This is going to be a really, really interesting new thing. And I'm not going to sit here and say it's going to be absolutely amazing from the jump start. But I do think that it's going to be different. And I think that different can be good sometimes. And I think in this situation, it is a good thing. So I am excited for this new Saints offense. And if you are as well, I think that that's totally okay. And I think that that's totally justified. So don't let anybody say you shouldn't be excited about the Saints. You don't know what you're talking about. The Saints are going to stink. They don't have anybody worth a shit on the roster. If, if your friends that are following other football teams are saying that, I'm sorry. They don't know ball and they're not paying attention to the Saints. They have made a lot of un, you know under the radar moves and different changes to their roster to improve the, or not to the roster, but to the coaching staff to improve the team as a whole. And other fan bases aren't going to necessarily know that. So I'm excited. You should be excited as well. And it doesn't matter who's producing for the Saints. It doesn't matter if Kendra Miller takes over. It doesn't matter if, if, if Jamal Williams starts leading the team. It doesn't matter if Rashid Shahid takes over as wide receiver one. I don't care if Foster Morrow or Dallin Holker is the starting tight end. I don't, I, I don't care who's throwing the football. I don't, I don't give a shit who is on the field. I give a shit about the team's success. And as long as the team has offensive success, I'm a happy camper. I don't need much. I don't need an amazing season only from Derek Carr. I don't need Alvin Kamara to go get 1,000 yards. I don't need Chris Olave to go get me 1,500 yards through the air. I need my team to win football games. I need my team to play full four quarters. I need my team to execute their assignments. I don't care who it is. I just want to see my team succeed as a whole, not as individuals. Now, here's some more Saints starters for, or from ESPN, excuse me. They said the starting two wide receivers, Chris Olave and Rashid Jaheed, and the top two tight ends, Juwan Johnson and Taysom Hill. As we all know, Juwan Johnson is dealing with a little bit of an injury. We don't really have a timetable uh, uh, as to where and when he could return, but there is that to monitor. Now, my second takeaway from this is that if Clint Kubiak's offense is, you know, ends up working the way that we all are hoping, we all are anticipating that it will, I'm going to be honest, there's no stopping this offense. There, there really is no stopping the pass catchers, especially – in the running, in the rushing attack, and especially guys like Taysom Hill, and especially guys like Chris Olave and Rashid Shahid, there is just 
so much potential in this group and in this unit. I am so, so excited. And let's take a look at what the wide receivers did in 2023. And I know Cedric Wilson wasn't with the Saints last year, but he still put up decent numbers and averaged over 13 or averaged 13 and a half yards per catch. Interesting enough, I was actually kind of surprised to see this. Chris Olave, out of the four top wide receivers for the Saints, had the lowest average. And that's not a bad thing. That's not sitting here saying he stunk. He had the most yards by a landslide. But I just thought that was kind of interesting. Like, I thought that was kind of weird. So it makes me think if you give Rashid Shahid and A.T. Perry and Cedric Wilson more opportunities, I think that they can produce still at a high level and put up really good production. But you can still have, you know, uh, Chris Olave be your wide receiver one. And let's not forget about the rookie, Bub Means. You can't guard Bub. And why I've been saying that, if you go back, if you go to my Twitter, if you hit me up, I mean, I've posted about it multiple times. Uh, We've used a graphic on the show. The size and athletic comparison from the combine of Bub Means and Michael Thomas, it's scary how similar. And that's actually pretty interesting. Bub Means is actually, you know, if you close your eyes and you just look at the numbers, you're going to end up picking Bub Means. Now, I want to say you, this is a really interesting thing for this kid, and I really am excited about this player. Ross Jackson does a phenomenal job over at Locked On Saints and Saints News Network. Um, I highly encourage you to go check out his work. He said – when evaluating him from OTAs and minicamp, quote, talk about looking the part. Now, this offseason, his physicality and his work over the middle have really stood out, and the fact that he has uh, been standing out on post routes is really exciting to me. I think that Bub Means could be a similar, or used in a similar role as Michael Thomas, where you can have him line up in the X receiver role, and you can have him go over the middle, have him go down a post, have him go down the seam, you know, just be a uh, dominant player across the middle. And then on top of that, all the reports are indicating that he can be a good hands catcher on the outside for the Saints. So I really like this for New Orleans. I really like this addition, and I loved this draft pick, and I'm excited to see what Bum Means can do for the Saints. Now, we haven't even discussed Taysom Hill yet. I mean, we're sitting here just talking all this you know, praise about the Saints offense and how they could be really, really good and underrated, but we haven't even gotten to the Storm and Mormon. We, I mean, we haven't discussed anything about the best offensive football player and arguably the best all-around football player in the National Football League. It is Taysom Hill. We haven't even talked about how Clint Kubiak's going to use him. And he's going to use him really, really well. They have been meeting a lot. They have been working outside of practices. They've been in discussion. Clint Kubiak understands that number seven is a very special type of player and that he should be used in very special roles. So I am excited to see possibly the most creativity around Taysom Hill that we've ever seen. Now let's talk about the trenches real quick. The offensive line starters, there's no mysteries here. All the reports we've seen from practices this offseason, Talese Fuong on the left side, Trevor Penning on the right side. So that doesn't surprise me whatsoever. Nick Saldaveri, I also agree with ESPN there. I think that he is going to take over as the left guard for the New Orleans Saints. Eric McCoy back at the center position. He was a pro bowler last year. And Cesar Ruiz, the right guard, please, 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 Cesar, can you just be consistently good a couple of games this year? That's all I'm asking. Now my takeaway number three, the entire operation comes down to the trenches and specifically the offensive line. And why I just said, Cesar, please be consistently good a couple times, he just frustrates the hell out of me because you'll see a one or two good games and you'll see some of the just terrible production and then the Saints will invest my. It, it just it, it's been very frustrating for Caesar Ruiz. I've gotten into it multiple times, and I'm not going to do it again. But um, if the offensive line does not execute, it doesn't just rely on or fall on Caesar Ruiz. It falls on Trevor Penning and Talise Fuanga. It also falls on Nick Saldaveri. It also falls on Eric McCoy. The tackles uh, positions, especially like if they can't execute, the entire operation will blow up, and it will not be pretty. So. Could there some be additions incoming? Probably not. I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but unless there's a really interesting player and a really special player that becomes available when teams are getting down to their 53-man rosters, I think that they're content when, and I think that they're going to roll with what they got. I mean, they had the opportunity to go sign Dalton Reisner, and they passed up on that. They could have gone at any point in time and offered him a contract. I don't know if they're in the market for a guy like Connor Williams, but he wants to play center, so it's not like you could go and get him to come and play guard. 
I also think that if they wanted David Bakhtiari, they would have went and go, uh, gone ahead and paid him. Like, I think that the Saints are done adding to the offensive line, and I think this is what they're going to roll with unless, of course, there's a really good player that becomes available here in the next month or so. Now, I want you to answer this question for me, Saints fans. What's the biggest strength of this offense? Do you think it's the wide receivers? Do you think it's quarterbacks, running backs, play caller? Like, what do you think it is? But also, I want you to answer what's the biggest weakness. I want you to share your thoughts. Let me know what you think. And, you know, I'll be interacting with you in the comment section. All right, so the Saints starters on the defensive line, on the def defensive side of the trenches, we had Nathan Shepard, Brian Brzee, Carl Granderson, Cam Jordan, Chase Young. That's what ESPN predicted for the New Orleans Saints. And my fourth takeaway, and it is going to be about the defensive line, I do believe that the New Orleans Saints uh, did improve their pass rush this offseason. And the sack production was not good for the Saints last year. They were tied for 28th in terms of sack production. And it wasn't even pretty. It, it, at the end of the day, I want to see the production. I, they, they did the right things. They added players. They brought in talent to add to the defensive side or defensive line, not just on the outside, but on the inside as well with Christian Boyd as a defensive tackle. I really, really am excited to see the edge rushers, and I, I think Carl Granderson is only getting better. Chase Young, I think he has a lot to play for, so expect really good production from him. And Cam Jordan, I know that he isn't the same player he once was, but he that, he's still smart. He's very technical, and when he isn't asked to be a starter, I think that he can be much more effective in his reps when he is on the field but the biggest fix for me comes not just for the not at the pass rusher it's from stopping the run the new orleans saints last year so many times just would get gashed and it would blow things up it would be third and long tyson bajan rolling out has plenty of time decides to take off or the, the pass rush excuse me is coming in decides to take off up the middle and gets a 14 yard gain in first down I mean, how many times did we see that? How many times did we see uh, Josh Dobbs do that? How many times did we see all these different quarterbacks? Tommy DeVito. I mean, it was unbelievable how regularly the Saints offense or defense would collapse when the ball would be on the ground, whether it was a, a ball carrier or whether it was a quarterback running the ball on, in a screen. I mean, it just was super, super frustrating. The Saints have to be better at stopping the run, and I really do think that they will be. Fingers crossed. Let's see the production, though. Now, the starters at the linebacker position, it's Demario Davis and Pete Werner. But I do think that they missed out on this because the Saints a lot of times do have three linebackers. Um, and maybe not necessarily even three linebackers, but a lot of time, I do think Willie Gay is going to be active. Like, I, I do think that a lot of the times we're going to see Willie Gay be on the field. He is going to be a very key part to the defense. Dennis Allen loves his energy. He loves his ex the, the speed that he plays with. He loves his attitude, and I think that – that is a big reason why we will see Willie Gay very active on Sundays. And this is what the, uh, the linebacker depth chart, excuse me, is shaking out to be currently. Pete Werner, Demario Davis, Willie Gay, and those are the three starters. And I do think that Willie Gay is an interesting piece because he can play in coverage. I think he's better in coverage than Pete Werner, but I also think that he's good in tackling. I think Pete Werner is a good chess piece, and I think that he could be utilized in uh, specific situations really well, but I think Willie Gay could be utilized more as a starter. So really quick question, why not subscribe? I mean, if you're still watching, we must be doing something, right? I mean, right? Right? Like, if you're still hanging out, clearly we haven't, you, you, you haven't lost interest yet. So if you want year-round coverage and you want more free videos every single day, Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It's 100% free. We go live multiple times a week, and we also give you uh, multiple videos a day all throughout the week. So be sure to lock us in for free if you're a diehard Saints fan. So the Saints starters in the defensive back area, it's going to be Marshawn Lattimore, Paulson Adebo, Kool-Aid McKinstry, ESPN, picking Kool-Aid over Elante Taylor. Hot take right there. Tyron Matthew and then Jordan Howden, which I do agree Jordan Howden will be the starter. I also... Wouldn't be surprised if Jonathan Abram was considered to be a starter as well because he did uh, fill in nicely alongside Tyron Matthew. Now, my fifth takeaway, I do believe this down to the depth of my core. The New Orleans Saints have one of the best, if not the best, defensive back group 
in the entire National Football League. And I, and I really, really hope that this team can stay healthy because if they can, I mean, there is nothing stopping this group. Paulson Adebo, he's in a contract year this year, and I think that there is no reason not to expect him to absolutely tear it up in 2024. Jordan Howden, the rookie out of Minnesota last year, was stellar, and I think in year two, he will be awesome. Tyron Matthew, the honey badger, goodness gracious. I don't have to do too much talking about him. We know how good he is. Marshawn Lattimore, one of the best cornerbacks in the league when he's healthy. He believes still that he is the top cornerback in the league. Can't wait to see him prove that. And Alante Taylor, I do think that he is going to be the starting nickelback. And if you do think about this, it is interesting because this is really, you know, the year two of Alante Taylor in that position. Like last year, he was just now starting to learn it around this time, whereas this year, he's had all this time to really hone in on the craft and hone in on the skill set. And Dennis Allen did speak about Kool-Aid McKinstry, and he said that he's going to possibly be in the slot. He could line up anywhere. He said, I could see him compete, or I do see him competing in that spot, talking about in the nickel slot position, uh, along with the outside corner position. And so I don't really see anybody just being a nickel only. I see that position as being a dual position player. Whether it's a nickel safety, nickel corner, we don't have anybody on our team that's just a nickel only. And I do believe that Elante Taylor, number one, will be your starter in the slot. Again, like I just said, he, he's going to have the full year to really learn this, uh, th this role and dive into this role and really hone in the craft and the skill set it takes. Because he's good on the outside in coverage, but I think that playing on the inside is very, very different than playing on the outside. And I'm pumped up to see Elante Taylor really hone in on his craft. But I also am really pumped up about Kool-Aid McKinstry, and I think that he could have a really good long-term impact. To be honest, don't be surprised if Paul Sinadibo asks for all this money and he doesn't come back next year in free agency. And the Saints decide to roll with Kool-Aid McKinstry. The other option is, you know, what if at the end of, or we get to the trade deadline and Saints decide to load off, or offload some of these players like a, uh, or like a Marshawn Lattimore or a Paul Sinadibo or something like that. You have an option to take over uh, for the future in Kool-Aid McKinstry. But I don't want him to be rushed back from his foot injury. I think that there isn't any urgency and there shouldn't be any rush to put him back on the field. He's a good player. He'll be highly impactful. But there's no reason to delay his long-term impact and his consistent week in and week out. Um, the, 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 I, I'm, the, the impact again, it, 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 all of that, does not, it does not matter if he just gets re-injured. So I do not think you need to rush him back. I think you need to take your time with Kool-Aid McKinstry because there's no pressure to put him on the field. You have really good defensive back players. Now, final thoughts. I think that this New Orleans Saints roster is wildly underrated. I think it's a really good team. A lot of people are writing off this unit, and I think that this coaching staff got much better this offseason. But I do think this adding Justin Simmons would be the cherry on top, and I'm, I'm not going to stop talking about it. I will not quit until Justin Simmons is wearing black and gold this upcoming season. Now, I think he would be the cherry on top. He'd be really, really good, and I think that that is the last piece of the puzzle. But what do you think? Thoughts on the Saints roster? I want you to be honest with me. What do you think about it? Is it good? Is it bad? Do you want things to somebody to get added? Do you want somebody to get traded? I want you to share your thoughts and let me know what you think down below. Bars. Y'all stay golden. We'll see you next time.